In this video, we will talk about time domain electrothermal analysis, which effectively means running electrothermal analysis when using transient or envelope simulator in ADS. Let's take a look at an example where I have a test bench which is set up to be run with envelope simulator. Here is my MMIC PA and as you can see at the input terminal, I have a RF pulse modulated source with a specific pulse definition which has rise and fall time defined as one microsecond. Similarly, the drain bias supply for the transistors inside also is pulsed and it is pretty much the similar spec which I am using for input RF pulse. Now in a regular simulation like this, you all must know how to set up envelope simulator and here you can notice the time step for envelope to be run is 0.1 microsecond which is basically 10 times the sampling so that we get a pretty smooth capture of the rise and fall edge and the overall simulation time is set for 100 microsecond which is basically to cover five cycles now this example is only used for demonstration in your actual case you may have your own specific waveform or modulation which you may want to analyze so you can go ahead and set it up accordingly now along with envelope we have an electrothermal simulator now when we were using electrothermal simulator with frequency domain solvers or with dc simulator the setup is pretty straightforward where you only specify the technology file or the thermal technology file now when you use electrothermal simulator with any time domain simulators, there is another concept which comes into picture and that is thermal simulator time step because your signal is changing with respect to time and you would like to perform electrothermal analysis at various time instances to capture the thermal behavior of the chip or multi-technology assembly which you are simulating. Now the straightforward method could be that you set up the same time step in thermal simulator as you set up in envelope or transient simulator. But then there is a slight difference because these circuit simulators are basically capturing the electrical time constants of the circuit which can be very rapidly changing. However, the thermal performance may not be changing so rapidly or you may not see a huge thermal impact in a short span of time. So while you can run electrothermal at every time instance, but in most cases that's not required because thermal time constants are usually larger than the circuit time constants. And thereby you can have your own specific time step which you can use to run thermal analysis. Now this is simple option number one. In option number two, you could use logarithmic time step so that at every decade you keep on bumping up the simulator time step uh, which you want where you want to perform the electrothermal analysis all this is very well documented if you go to help section and then refer to the section here called simulator time step and all these things have been very clearly explained so I already talked about thermal simulator time step and logarithmic time step. Now, if you read through the documentation, you will find that ETH or electrothermal is a loosely coupled electrothermal simulator where electrical simulators such as envelope or transient and thermal simulator can control their own distinct internal time step and then synchronize at a specified time. Now, based apart from these two settings, you also have a concept called arbitrary time step. To do so, you can simply create a text file in this naming format. And that text file simply contains the time point at which you would like to perform electrothermal analysis. And this can be totally arbitrary based on your understanding of how your circuit is going to behave at different time instances. With the example given here, you can see from 0 to 5 microsecond, we are performing thermal simulation at every 1 microsecond. And then after that, you can see from 10 to 90, it is happening at 10 microsecond. And after which it is happening at every 2 microsecond. So overall, your circuit simulation might run for 100 microsecond. 
but thermal analysis will be only performed at these specified time intervals. So it's completely flexible and you can operate the way you want. Now let's get back to our setup. So in our setup, we had electrothermal simulator, which is set for one microsecond and is using a logarithmic time step. Now after I run this analysis, and if you look at simulation log, of course we start at DC, which is the basic operating point, and you can see temperature of the circuit predicted is 25 because both of these pulses are zero volts so there is no dc supply going into our amplifier but as soon as the pulse starts you can notice the thermal time and here it is changing for with one microsecond difference till 10 millisecond 10 microsecond after that you can notice it is thermal uh, simulation is happening at every 10 microsecond because we are using logarithmic time step and if I would have simulated it for longer time you could have seen 100 microsecond and so on and so forth so if I use arbitrary time file which I just showed you then the thermal uh, simulations will be performed only at those instances whereas the electrical simulation will be performed as per your envelope setting here now after the analysis you can look at the data display here and then look at the thermal impact on your modulation in the frequency domain or in the time domain pulse now along with this result you get obviously the thermal profile of your chip and here you can see is the two stage power amplifier and couple of transistors there now when you run time domain simulation using either a transient or envelope controller along with looking at the surface plots and the temperature profile you can also display the transient movie now in that transient movie you can see how the temperature is changing with respect to time and you can notice the temperature profile changing similar thing can be also shown in the surface plot here if we go ahead and display transient movie and now you can see how temperature builds up over time and how the heat spike comes up in your chip or the assembly which you might be simulating pretty cool right okay so these are the fundamentals of you using electrothermal simulation with the circuit envelope or transient controller it's not very hard to do as you can see is as simple as you see on on the screen and in, in this video the only thing you need to worry about is how often you would like to perform electrothermal analysis while running a time domain simulation using envelope or transient so that's all for this video i wish you all the best in your design work